This is a Flying Cow production. Well, hello and welcome everyone to the second ever Teddy Awards for the Academy. That's right. We are here at the Teddy Awards, uh, awarding the films of 1930. Uh, if anybody is, for some reason, uh, jumping in at the uh, um, at the podcast right now, uh, this is the Academy, the show where we take a random year, we choose uh, 15 or so different films from it, and break them down, and eventually... We do an award ceremony where we decide the best films from that year. I, of course, am your host, the flying cow himself, Clay Johnson. And here with me today are uh, Hannah Kiefer and the uh, to- the Teddy Award winner himself, uh, Jack Allison. How are you guys today? Uh, yeah, I... <laughs> Sorry, I haven't won a Tony yet, but I appreciate the good faith. Uh, yeah, Clay. yeah, uh, no. I'm just sorry. I really didn't mean for that to come out. <laughs> sorry about that. Hey, yeah, good to be here, guys. Absolutely, absolutely. It's uh, it's always great to have you guys here. Um, and uh, give out some awards for uh, the 1930 batch of films. I will say, you know, just kind of. Uh, talking about the films as a whole, this was definitely much a much different experience than 1994 was. Um, number one, um, we were much more limited on really what we could do because of you know the choices and things like that. It's also you know obviously we're uh, it's pre code. We're dealing with, um, you know, there's still some silent films in here, you know, because we're just getting to the point where, you know, the talking pictures, the talkies are taking over kind of thing. But, you know, we've obviously still got the the silent films lingering. And we also, you know, as I said, we're uh, still pre-code. The production code exists, but it's kind of more of a suggestion. And you're going to see a bit more risque things in there. So obviously 1930 was a much different beast than 1994. But do you guys have any uh, thoughts uh, about this whole crop before we kind of jump into the awards themselves. Well, yeah. Spoiler alert. None of the, none of these silent films won because they didn't have sound. (laughs) That actually might not be true, but you know, whatever. (laughs) You'll just have to tune in to find out, baby. All right. Okay. That, that's that's yeah, all we want to say. I all feel right. like all the overview that I had to say about it was has been said in previous episodes. It's a, sure. it's a, it's an interesting year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No, that is that is true. All right. So, um, with that being said, uh, we uh, are we have narrowed things down to the top five films. So those will be the nominees for best picture. Um, for this year, but before we get into that, I do want to kind of mention the uh, the films that definitely aren't making the top five. So um, our our bottom pick, um, each one of us had a a bottom pick that was kind of the the bottom of our list. Um, I mean, uh, I think a couple of us had the same one. And one person had had a different one. I know my uh, my lowest pick was Anna Christie, uh, because what? it was the only one that actively like, I, like I did not like. Just because I mean we we talked about it in that review. It just mm-hmm. it felt really forced, and I did not like what the movie was saying. I did not like the way that the character ended up. It just kind of made me mad. Um, but uh, um, who, I, somebody else chose Anna Christie. Who else 
I did. I, I think, yeah, I think I did. Um, for what it's worth, I also should mention I did watch the German dub of um, of uh, Blue Angel as well. And, oh, you uh, did? Yeah. So because of that, uh, Anna Christie was number last. Okay. <laughs> I was about to say the the last time we spoke, I wasn't sure if you had gotten to to watch the the German. Of- yep, I watched it this afternoon. I actually because uh, we 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 had a file that we were sharing of that movie of the German dub that I finally got around to watching. And I couldn't get okay. it to work for some reason, so I I looked on another site to find it. And oh, okay. um, it was a weird dub. Like it was all German, but like for sure. like I, I don't know if it was like this for you guys or not. Like, did it sound like when he was screaming at the end, the whole chicken sound thing that he did in the English dub? Did it sound like shotgun blasts? No. It was like no. audio peaking like shotgun blasts when he was oh, weird. oh, well, I mean, the, the aud- I mean, the audio is not great. No, no, yeah, no, like, I, I, no, I, 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 don't, yeah. I mean, like, legitimately, it sounds like they did, like, fully of a shotgun blast. Like, almost oh, like, no, no, it no. definitely doesn't sound, didn't sound like that on, on the copy I watched. That's either. a bummer, then, because, like, it made yeah. it better for me. Oh, That's wow. Really <laughs> That's great. I'm like, yeah, more this shit. <laughs> He's mad. <laughs> <laughs> all right all right and then so and then, hannah you're the only outlier what was your um your number 15 your bottom of the was list. down it was down at number 15 it was it, the, it was pretty the, low for for most of us I think. yeah the yeah. the bottom five of my list were movies mostly that i just uh i i don't think i actively like was mad at any of them but sure. um but the bottom five were ones that like I just could not bring any <laughs> any, any semblance of interest in. Or, yeah. And so Lodge, Lodge Door definitely not, never my genre. Uh, this one was not the one to break through. <laughs> well, there you go. There you go. All right. Yeah, I, I wanted to add too that um, mm-hmm. for those of you out there, uh, all like thousands of you who are tracking my results and like what I'm ranking consistently each time to check for consistency uh my my rankings have changed a little bit from our discussions it's no longer the same you guys both talked me up and down from a couple of my previous picks Mm -hmm. so my list is a little bit different from what it was um previously from previous episodes and and we can talk a little bit yeah i was gonna say we can talk a little bit about that after we announce the nominees let's do it for best picture so uh I am going to go ahead. Obviously, this will be the last award that we actually hand out, but I do want to give everyone um, the opportunity to know what is still in the running. So here we are, the nominees for Best Picture. And the nominees are Madam Satan. The Blue Angel, The Unholy Three, City Girl, and All Quiet on the Western Front. Now, I will say, because I'm just noticing this, both of you guys' picks got in our in our top in our top five. Mine did not, (laughs) even though my Mine was my favorite out of out of those, but naturally, uh, Jack you know. tanked that one. <laughs> yeah, I know. Jack, Jack really didn't like Monte Carlo for. It was middle reason. for me. Yeah, I think it was my like number three. Your number four? four. It looks like. Oh, okay. Four. Yeah. For what yes, it's worth, it's... that's that's one that I did watch after our episode and uh, moved it up a little bit higher than I would have previously. What's well, something, I guess? <laughs> <laughs> especially, I, I did find that especially funny after I remember like when we, after we had watched all um, all of them, you were like, I feel like I have a really good track record for this. And I was like, yeah, we liked Monte Carlo, but then ours ended yeah. up in the top five. And unfortunately yours did not. I, I was about to say, I I actually really bragged. I was like, I think two, <laughs> two times in a row, I chose a you really a good pick and mine now is the only one i think did not make the the nominees i think criteria was just the biggest thing i think like hannah and i kind of had like a mixed bag for what we assign as the best you know like like, i i found it fascinating that we have like these that that we have all these all these other um so many of the of the films from 1930 felt the same 
Like not all of them, but a lot of them felt like they had very similar beats and very similar Agreed. characters. And yeah. so I think it, I think it says something about that. That two of the of the five in our yeah. in here were like really a lot, a little bit more out there in terms well, of storytelling. And that I, can I mean, see that kind of thing feeling fresher amid, sure. you know, a whole bunch of similar characters. Um, so I, I don't know. I don't know if it had something to do with it. Uh, but I was I was surprised when I tallied yeah. this up and saw that they were that those two were were there just, in the mix. Just well, imagine if we also, got in games of boy. <laughs> Jeez. Well, and also, I mean, you say that we had a lot of films that were very much the same. I think that all of our top five are very different. I agree. I, I think that these are none of these are any of the ones that feel similar to any of the. Oh other no, ones. not at all. Yeah, and um, I, I would not be surprised if that was the reason why they ended up at the top. Is that is that even even um you know that that the other ones there was something that we all were kind of like eh this isn't this doesn't feel sure. as as fresh <laughs> this doesn't feel as unique or as interesting. Yeah, yeah. I, I I will say you know if I have one here that I'm missing and i guess i didn't miss it as much until i realized that you guys has made it and mine didn't but i think <laughs> monte carlo is probably the one i missed the most here uh does anybody else have one that you know they were really hoping would make it but just didn't quite make the cut am i allowed to say north <laughs> no um so these <laughs> these are these are almost my top five. Are, are these pretty much your top five? Um, yeah. I can't, looking back, I adjusted, I shifted a little bit when I was tallying, so I can't tell mm -hmm. if it's exactly it, but Animal Crackers might have been number five. Um, okay. But it's but it's pretty close. Like, this, if sure. they're not my top five, they're five in my top six. So I'm pretty pleased. Well, there you go. There you <laughs> yeah, go. I, I had three of mine in there, I think. <laughs> so, sure. Yeah, yeah. Two, two of my picks weren't even close. Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say th three. Three of mine are in there. Actually, I think my top three is. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Is is uh, are are in there. Um, the other two are, you know, a bit of a surprise. But you know, that's it's kind of the fun of this. Jack has um, three in there for his top five, so not too bad. Okay. Well, there you go. There you go. All right. Well. Uh, all right. So you know, those are the films. Um, we don't really need to talk about them. We've already talked about them. We we know what these films are about. Um, we know what's going on with these films. So what do you say we go ahead and get into the, um, the awards for this? So for anybody that uh, did not listen to uh, the, the Teddy Awards for 1994, basically the way this is going to go, is that myself, Jack, and Hannah have all uh, chosen awards of our own. We each have three awards uh, with at least one or two additionals that are just kind of off to the side, extra special awards um, that, um, you know, are going to be handed out. So why don't we go ahead and let's start... Hmm... Let's start with one of Hannah's. All right. So, um, Hannah, um, uh, we're going to welcome you to, um, you know, to introduce this first award and let us know what award you are going to be handing out today. Yeah. I think today we're going to start off with uh, an award that I think. I, I meant to go back and re-listen to the 94 ones. I'm pretty sure I did something similar along these lines yeah. then. I'm such a huge musical nerd that I couldn't not put in best musical number. Um, now, a lot of the musical numbers in this were not like as um, as memorable as I hoped, uh, sure. but I did end up with a solid four nominees. Um, and so uh, uh, in alphabetical order by... Uh, uh, movie name um we have uh hello i must be going from animal crackers okay. we have falling in love again from the blue angel we have the catwalk from madam satan which is the song they sing as they go on to the zeppelin mm -hmm. and we have she'll love me and like it from monte carlo which was my personal favorite the opening number <laughs> sure okay um and of uh do you want me to i forget how we do this do i just go ahead and announce the winner do i talk yeah, more the, about the nominees the, the, anything i mean you you can talk a little bit about them but yeah when you're ready to announce the award just you know tell us who the teddy goes to 
Yeah. Uh, now, this is the one that I probably have the least to say about from all, from all of these, um, <laughs> just because as much as I love musicals, most of these were not uh, were not entirely up my alley. Um, sure. But but these are all pretty interesting. Um, my winner, however, is going to have to go to Falling in Love Again from the Blue Angel. Specifically that would have been mine, of, too. Because of that, how that well is... it was integrated into the story, of how well they they made it match what was the really evoke the themes and the atmosphere of the of the narrative at the moment. Um, and just because it's a really great, very Marlena Dietrich performance, and it's yeah. uh, it's very interesting, um, and so uh, as, especially in an era where uh, it wasn't yet really common for <laughs> songs to actually advance the narrative in any way or be commenting yeah. on the on the story. Um, this uh, I really enjoy how Falling in Love Again goes a little bit deeper than well, obviously deeper than the Animal Cracker song, but <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, gets a little bit more into the the core of the of the big themes of the story. And we don't we yeah. don't get that as much in a lot of these others. So I'm gonna that's gonna be my winner. Blue Angel is gonna take home best musical number for 1930. Congrats, Blue Angel. Mm -hmm. Con congratulations to for, Blue for the same Angel. song twice <laughs> that's right yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right all right so uh jack you are next up and he's muted uh, you are on mute yeah <laughs> there i am sorry i was eating some snacks and i forgot to turn it off mute uh, oh, and and I think your audio went is going somewhere else. Right? Gosh dang it! This is the yeah. best day of my whole life, y'all. It's okay. It's second. all right. We'll 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 vamp. We'll vamp for a second. I could just do all my awards yeah. in a row. <laughs> uh, how, how about uh, you know uh, we we perform the the winning song. Falling in love again. Well, I'm glad I poured myself I will, a drink. <laughs> I I will say Marlena Dietrich especially in the American version has a quality of sounding like she's drunk while singing very much. So <laughs> all right. Hmm. We're ready, Jack. Yeah. Okay. okay. Can, am I better now? Yeah. You're good. Cool. Awesome. Audio fixed. Okay. So we had a lot of nice things to say about a lot of the uh, women leads in a lot of our movies from the previous episodes. Mm -hmm. So yep. I figured uh, it was about overdue for us to give some of the men a, uh, a shout out and some of the recognition. So my yeah, because you know, you know, men are very often underserved. Well, we haven't said we haven't said very a lot overlooked of them. in the film. We haven't said much about them in the previous in the previous couple episodes. So I wanted yeah, yeah. to kind of give them a shout out. So mm -hmm. my first category is for best simp. <laughs> okay. Yep, that's a Jack category. And the nominees are Roy Rutledge, Hell's Angels. Mm -hmm. Yep. Ex Professor <laughs> Emmanuel Rath, The Blue Angel. Bob Brooks, Madam Shatan, <laughs> Paul, Devorchi, <laughs> yeah, oh, and yeah. Hector McDonald, the Unholy Three. <laughs> wow, that's that's actually really hard. I don't know how to pick. <laughs> well, we've got an answer. All right, and who does it go to, Jack? The best Teddy Award for best simp goes to. Paul for the divorcee. I, I, I honestly I can't argue with that. The moment you said Paul, I'm like, actually, that's pretty much his only role in that movie. So that's yeah, my, that that's... was my reasoning. Yeah, because of the other ones, they have moments where they either aren't there or they come back. There's there's some seesaw between pretty much everybody involved. Um Hector McDonald was the kind of outlier with that um, from the Unholy Three, but my what what kind of knocked him out for me was just he 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 he's too self interested. In, sorry, he's too self interested. You know what I mean? Like he 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 obviously he's not interesting, himself. but yeah. yeah, he's not trying to get himself innocent <laughs> for the sake of being with his partner. He's doing it because he wants to be free, and that's that's what knocked him out, unfortunately. So he's he had too much agency. Yes, too, too much, much agency. agency. Yep. <laughs> all right, all right. Well, uh, congratulations, Paul. It's the only thing you're going to win. <laughs> oh, well, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. So uh, that means it is my turn um, for a category. And, um, you know, honestly, when I... It, it's it's so weird. I, I remember the last time we did this... I've, 
bunch of categories came into my head and the ones that you would normally associate with me were not the ones that came into my head. Um, it's just kind of based on what I see in the films and I'm like, you know what? This is deserving. I want to highlight this. So um, my first um, my first award is actually the award for best score. Um, and I, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and tell you, uh, there's not a whole lot of nominations because it's 1930. There weren't a lot of films with scores. Um, but the, the two that stuck out to me were, um, Earth hmm. and City Girl. And uh, the Teddy goes to City Girl. I mean, duh. <laughs> I mean, the, the way that all three of us talked about how much we loved that score. Plus, uh, to be honest, while I liked the one for Earth, <clears throat> there are apparently like three different versions of it. And I, I don't know that we all actually saw the same one. <laughs> But City Girl, you know, we all loved that scroll score for City Girl. It was done so well, mm -hmm. really matched with, um, you know, what was going on there. And, you know, City Girl was, you know, I, I, I will say, I think kind of the the breakout fave. I, th I think it was the one that caught us most by surprise. Mm -hmm. I think it was the one that we were the least expecting to really love. And then it just kind of, you know. Uh, kind of engaged us all. Yes, it was um, the whiplash in 1930. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> also, the great score. Yeah, yeah <laughs> I, I, I think I agree with you. Uh, the um, of the films we saw, uh, you know, if, if I think of now of great scores of 1930, I'm immediately going to go to the scene where they're running in the field together once they've gotten to the farm. Like that's mm -hmm. yeah. obviously, obviously beautifully shot, but also just yeah. the music and it just swells in such a way that's very satisfying. It's just And really it's, it's not at all surprising to me that, you know, looking at the best score that we're looking at the silent films for this. <laughs> that yep. was that yeah. was where they put their their time and their effort into a lot of this, you know, since yeah. they didn't have the, the speaking. And so they were like, well, we better make our score really work. And these two absolutely did. Triumphing yeah. definitely over all the other scores. Yeah, and, and I will say um, what's crazy is that when I was first trying to watch this film, the first version that I found did not include the score. Ooh. And I'm just like, Ouch. What, what, what? You're missing out like, on a lot. What, I, I was like, you know, I, I saw one and I was like, hmm, oh, there's another one. And the score started up in the, and I'm like, why would I watch the one without the score? And then I loved the score so much. I'm like, why would you do a version without the score? This and then you look it up and you find out that it was scored by John Cage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. So, yes, um, those are our first three awards. So let us go ahead and move on to our next awards. Uh, Hannah, go ahead and kick us off. What is your next award? All right. I think between my, my other two awards, I think the next one we're going to present is uh, we're calling it best for a modern audience. Uh, watching right. this. Go ahead. Uh, watching these films from 1930, almost a hundred years ago. Um, it's, it's very clear which ones absolutely do not hold up. <laughs> and sometimes it's, sometimes it's, it's not, it's not in ways that I would have expected. Um, we definitely skipped out. We, a lot of the ones we chose were classics for a reason and didn't necessarily have. We, I chose not to do the musical where we have two different kinds of, uh, of cultural appropriation and blackface in there. Um, mm, but there, yeah. there, there's Sorry, a lot of that. In the my big boy. Um, <laughs> uh, we, we skipped whoopee, which was really fun aside from that. Um, <laughs> But, uh, but yeah, but so uh, some of these did hold up surprisingly well for me. And so as I was thinking through um, which of these films would I show to somebody who maybe didn't watch a lot of older movies, what would I choose? And so from the 15, these were um, the five that I chose that I think would uh, probably work the best, um, either because... Actually, no, I did have six. <laughs> I kept scooting things around. I have six because one is a, one is a hear me out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So my best for modern audience uh, nominees um, were All Quiet on the Western Front, Animal Crackers, City Girl, mm -hmm. The Divorcee, Lodge Door, and Monte Carlo. Lodge Door, uh, specifically because 
avant-garde films tend to be similarly appreciated by avant-garde lovers throughout. <laughs> um, and so if you honestly, like, it, it probably, like, it probably yeah, goes down be. better now. than So it did if back you, then. if you like avant-garde surreal experimental films, yeah. Lodge door will, I think work just as well for you, for you now as, as most other films that are, yeah. that are claimed to the same genre. Terrence Malick fans will eat that shit up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like, so here we go. Here we go. This is, you know, it was my least favorite, but I, I think if somebody loved, uh, loved to be the surrealist films, I would absolutely show them this. Yep. But um, in all of these, um, uh, I think the one that I was, um, where I most forgot that I was watching a film from 1930. Uh, the winner is going to be All Quiet on the Western Front. Um, it was just so it was it was so well made and it was yeah. so clear and it was a lot less. Um, a lot of these have sort of a, a, a cheesy schmaltziness to them that we just don't find in our movies as much anymore. And so it kind of takes me out, even if I'm enjoying it. All Quiet feels like uh, that's absolutely one. It was it was, I think, the first or second one when I watched in my project uh, of watching 100 movies from 1930. And mm -hmm. it was it remains probably the the best fit for today it's one that i absolutely feel that i could just show to somebody else who loves movies and they would get it instantly even if they didn't watch a lot of older films it's it's just really universal and it's in how it was made well there you go congratulations to all quiet on the western front this is the first nomination and first win for all quiet on the <laughs> western front <laughs> there you go all right all right so uh jack what do you what do you have for us well, I don't have a whole lot of preamble for this next category, so I'd like to pad some time out by uh, mentioning some of the runner-up stuff category-wise that I talked about. Because, <laughs> yeah, we uh, we we are each given three categories to choose for this episode yeah. today, folks. And uh, I had a very tough time narrowing it down to three because there are several categories with some commonalities with the movies we watched that I really wanted to bring up. And I'm not going to obviously announce those, but I will say the categories that were cut uh, that I had. Some of the highlights were... Um, uh, Let's see. Best professor. Okay. Best, little, best little person. Best dog kicker. Oh, and biggest, stupidest, dumb idiot. I hate you. <laughs> see, now that one I can see some nominate nominees for. The others I'm like, is there more than one? Yeah. <laughs> see, the funny thing about that last one is that there's there two two of the nominees did make it onto another category, but the third one who deserves some mentioning sadly did not but again of those categories you'll, you'll just have to put your mind uh, your imagination as far as uh, it's possible that one of them might end up in my last nomination we'll, we'll see. see we will see we'll see but my uh actual category my second category that did make the finals uh that i chose was uh for best curator of a film featuring a gorilla and the nominees are so many me and the golden teddy goes to him. <laughs> oh, shit. I, me? I, I, uh, Jack, I, 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 I. Oh, geez. Uh, guys, I. Uh, this Once is again, you managed to give yourself an award. <laughs> well, you know what? I'm I, All I'll say about that is, is that like two time golden teddy, teddy winner is a lot sexier than <laughs> golden teddy winner. That's all I'm just going to say. Uh, but it, other than that, it's been an honor. I'd like to thank my agent. Um, uh, my Lord and Savior, uh, uh, Bruce Campbell, and uh, obviously the Academy. And thank you. I, I got to say, there. I feel like there's a good chance that there might have been a gorilla hiding in that Madam Satan uh, party scene. Oh, <laughs> like, I, I honestly, like there's probably, there's honestly, almost certainly a yeah, gorilla I on would that not, Zeppelin. I, I, I would fully believe it. See, you know, we brought up we brought up Batman and Robin last time with that episode. You're conflating that with Batman and Robin. <laughs> there you go. There you go. But again, who knows? Who knows? All right, all right. Well, um, my next uh, category um, is uh, um, best creator of this podcast. Me, I win. No, no. <laughs> uh, all right. Um, my next category is for uh, best visual effects um, because here we are in the 1930s and, you know, I had a hard time figuring out what to call this. I was like, is it best visual effects? Is it best stunts? Because it's 1930. Everything they do here is practical. So the visual effects are also stunts a lot of times. Um, 
So yeah. Um, but uh, I, I just I figured visual effects was kind of the best way to go about it. But they might also be uh, stunt scenes. Um, and uh, the nominees are the divorcee for a maniacal car accident. Um, let's see, Madam Satan for the whole blimp thing. Uh, the big house for, you know, the big shootout at the prison. All right. The big trail, the whole, wa especially the uh, wagon train coming down the mountain scene is phenomenal. And then Hell's Angels for a never ending amount of dog fights and <laughs> pilots that actually lost their lives. It's really sad um method but acting. huh method acting yeah and the teddy goes to hell's angels for those dog fights not only are they spectacular but um like i said th three people died making those that's i mean you know the, it's 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 you know pretty sad and it that is. should it never really happen sucks. Um, on, on a film, but you know, I, I believe that that deserves some credit. Um, you know, but, uh, yeah, uh, Hell's Angels, those were actually some really cool, um, airplane scenes, um, in that. Yeah. So, um, we are going to go ahead now and go into, um, th Hannah, your final category, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So one of the, uh, this came up a little bit in uh, Jack's Best Simp Award, but we one of the themes of many of these stories, many of these movies have been uh, women and, and the relationships they're in. And I found that throughout many of these, the uh, men were much less deserving <laughs> of the women. Yeah. Um, even the ones who were supposed to be like the badly behaved women were still head and shoulders above the men that they were with. Um, yeah. So my category uh, in, is titled, uh, the, this category is the biggest gap between awesome female lead and shitty male lead. <laughs> and so here we're looking at not just, you know, the most awesome woman or the, or, or the shittiest guy. We're looking at how big is the gap? <laughs> so yeah. some of these, you know, so we have six, um, one that I don't feel deserves to be there, but uh, given our conversation, I feel like other folks do. So our, our six options are, we have Anna and Matt from Anna Christie. We have Lola and Professor Rath from Blue Angel. We have Kate okay. and Lem from City Girl. We have Jerry and Ted from The Divorcee. Okay. We have Angela and Bob from Madam Satan. And we have Amy and Tom from Morocco. Okay. Um, all of these uh, pretty wide gaps. There's, uh, yeah. but there are there are some there's some where they get closer because the, the woman's kind of a jerk, and there's some that get closer because the yeah. guy's not that bad. Um, but the one where absolutely yeah, I, there's yeah. just no redeeming of this of this man, and uh, the woman did very very little wrong. Uh, the Teddy Award for the biggest gap between awesome female lead and shitty male lead has got to go to Anna and Matt from Anna Christie, who she was just that, trying to live her life, and he was horrible. And the I, only thing I she did wrong throughout the entire thing was deciding to was deciding she had to settle for that. Oh, and oh, there's just that. no there's no there's no redemption there. There's no, no redemption for no. him, and uh, she deserves so much better yeah. Anna, go find someone else go be happy you're somewhere else yes she's, she's everything he's just a pirate <laughs> <laughs> he's, he is a wonderful character and he's such a turd and so yeah uh, yeah so uh Anna christy you're gonna you're gonna take that for All the right. the least deserving couple <laughs> there you go there you go all right all right so um jack you are next up okay my last category, um, this was a tough one, like I said, narrowing it down, but this one ended up making the cut. And I think given the conversations we've had, it was the most appropriate. So my last category is for most wooden. I suppose a good follow-up to, to, to Hannah's previous category. <laughs> the nominees are Ivan Lanau 
The Unholy Three. Helen Parrish, The Big Trail. Margaret Dumont, The Animal Crackers. Tree in the foreground at timestamp four minutes and 19 seconds, The Divorcee. <laughs> and Gary the one they run into? Huh? Yeah. The, the one, one they run into? The one he's leaning up against while they're making out. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then Gary Cooper in Morocco. Yeah. And the winner is Gary Cooper, Morocco. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you just, I, I assume we're all in agreement on that one. He's, yeah, he's no. not great. <laughs> He's, He's not good in that. <laughs> Honestly, I I expected just because of the way you talked about it, I expected you to give it to Margaret Dumont. No, no, but, I, I, uh, I can't. No, <laughs> Gary Cooper is yeah. a level down. I've watched both movies. I can't. Do that. <laughs> <laughs> I would, but I've seen the other one. Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's all I got to say about all that. Right. That's all right. That's all I got to say about that. Yeah. All right. So um, now, uh, moving on to my final award before the last couple of awards of the evening. Um, and like I said, last time I was really surprised that I was not able to give an award for uh, best performance, best actor, uh, because I'm an actor and I'm usually very focused on that. But they're just, you know, in, in that one, there were just so many that were kind of like all on the same level. It was hard to pick one. Um, but I did actually come up with a pretty decent um, uh, group of nominees for best actor for the year 1930. Um, and these are, it's just best actor could be male, female, um, you know, maybe a gorilla in there as well. You maybe know, tree. We'll, we'll see. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Um, you know, uh, yeah, ed edging out Gary Cooper. <laughs> Did better um, than Gary Cooper. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the nominees for best actor. Mary Duncan in City Girl. Marlena Dietrich. In uh, any of the films Marlena Dietrich was in, really. Uh, probably, though, I'd give it to her for Morocco because she's more kind of the focus in that one. Um, let's see. Emil Jannings in Blue Angel. Robert Montgomery for The Big House. And Norma Shearer for The Divorcee. And the teddy goes to Norma Shearer for the divorcee. I mean, that that performance was just, I, I, I loved it. I mean, it's the only reason that I really liked that movie at all was that performance. I just thought it was so good. And so, uh, like, it, I, I got, you know, kind of the, the, the draw, the appeal. Um, and, uh, I, I really like Norma Shearer. I think she's very good. Hannah, um, do you hear the comment? <laughs> she was fine. <laughs> Come on, fight, 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 fight. Uh, I would have gone for, uh, Mary Duncan. I Mary guess Mary it's Mary fine. <laughs> <laughs> Hannah's famous quote for that movie. Um, it's, that's, probably that's my... <laughs> it's probably fine. It's probably fine. All right. All right. Yes. So, yes, that those are the main awards. Um we do have um one other award to hand out before the um the big <laughs> the big award. Um last time that we did this, I gave out an honorary award that um I decided to do again, but it's not one of like my awards it's just kind of we're gonna do this every time now kind of thing um and uh so uh that award um you know uh has kind of taken on a life of its own so it has been renamed um as the ernie sabella award after the winner of the first one and uh, to present 
the um well actually no let let me um let me go ahead and announce the nominees for this award um because uh last time it was pretty easy the idea was basically hey you know there were actually there was actually a couple of actors that were in more than one of these movies wouldn't it be fun to kind of throw them a bone kind of thing and uh this time there were a lot of actors in um, more than one of these movies. In fact, I might have missed one because I kind of made this list while I was um, under a tent working. Um, But um, I will say uh, once it came down to, you know, figuring out like, you know, figuring out who was in it, then it really just came down to kind of a gut feeling of who I felt was kind of the, the, top contributor kind of takes on an MVP type of role. So the nominees for this honorary award, usually you don't have nominees, but uh, like I said, there are a lot of people that um, do um, actually, I'm I'm just going to say these are kind of honorable mentions for the honorary award. Um, We have uh, Lillian Roth, who was uh, in both animal crackers and in um, uh, Madam Satan. We have Chester Morris, who was in both The Divorcee and um, The Big House, probably uh, two of Hannah's least favorite movies on this list. Um, We have Robert Montgomery, who was also in The Divorcee and The Big House. I didn't really think about that. That's funny. Um, We have George F. Marion, who was in both Anna Christie and The Big House. Um, but, um, when it came down to it, there was really only one person to give this to award, this award to, but to announce this award, we have the namesake of the award himself. Everybody give it up for Ernie Sabella. (laughs) Hey, it's Ernie Sabella. Not many podcasts out there would would uh, have a guest uh, a uh, guest appearance from Ernie Sabella. Yeah, my Ernie Sabella sounded much better on the in the car ride over here. Sorry, I was not uh, ready for this. Um, but yes, the uh, winner of the Ernie Sabella Award this time goes to marlena dietrich i mean we i i have been very effusive in my praise for marlena dietrich um over this uh kind of you know string of movies and uh honestly she was uh i mean morocco wasn't great but she gave a great performance in it and um you know the the blue angel is one that kind of um you know has really risen in my estimation uh, since watching it, um, you know, especially after actually getting to see the German version of it. Um, but yeah, I just, I, I, I get the hype behind Marlena Dietrich. I think that she was phenomenal, um, and just really impressive, um, and, um, you know, fun to watch. Um, you know, I, I, uh, if I, If anybody is ever like, uh, hey, you want to watch this movie? It's got Marlena Dietrich in it. I'll probably say yes. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, because she's just kind of a magnetic performer. Um, So, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So, now we are to the big one. The award of the night. And it is, of course, the... Teddy Award for Best Picture. That's right. And the uh, just to remind you, the nominees for Best Picture are Madam Satan, The Unholy Three, The Blue Angel, City Girl, and all quiet on the Western Front. Um, now I will tell you, just to be upfront here, this was a very difficult race. Technically, we had a tie for number one, but 
Um, one of the films uh, actually got two votes for number one, whereas the other one only got received one. So by process of you know tie breaking, that one uh, does win. But we we had some pretty strong films in this crop. Um, so for nineteen thirty, the best picture award goes to all quiet on the western front that's right we actually picked the same film as the oscars they got one um, right yeah, they got one they, right. they did they got one right yeah still looking at you guys for green book though what the hell <laughs> oh geez yeah oh not even gonna <laughs> no um but yeah so um definitely like i said and for anyone out there who is curious uh city girl was um one point away from winning this um definitely a a highlight for us i will say uh you know any one of these films in the top five definitely worth checking out i will also say i think monte carlo is a is a really fun um you know uh musical film from this this period directed by ernst lubitsch definitely worth checking out uh, Hannah, uh, Jack, you guys have one that you want to throw out, even if it wasn't on our list. Um, that you oh, think like even one that we didn't out. watch. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is this Hold is on, the time to kind of to kind of mention our honorable mentions here. That I, I don't know a whole lot of other 1930 films, so yeah. Well, I didn't ones... know I was going to get a chance to do that. Hold on, let me second. Let me look at my list and see just, if there's anything. To make sure ones out. that weren't on our list or ones that were not in the top five. I mean, you can mention ones that were on the list, or you can yeah. mention, you know, just other films from well, 1930 obviously, that you think people should check out. Obviously, I've seen scores and scores of uh, movies from 1930. Right. But, uh, uh, I guess of our list, I, I guess I'll just give an extra shout out to uh, Earth. It was, that was my third place. Um, just, again, the most... Uh, it wasn't a kind year for arts year films for our top five this year. So I'll just throw that one out there. That was where I ranked that one as far as the more um, abstract, for lack of a better word. I'm not as much as large door, obviously, but yeah, that's what I'll give my shout out to. I'll, I'll second earth. That was probably my one that I would have mentioned from the ones in the list um, from outside. I'll tell you the one that I almost chose. <laughs> I almost chose outward bound, uh, which is stars Leslie Howard. It's based on a play and it's, yeah, it's, a, it's set with this, uh, all these people who are um, on a, on a boat and they suddenly start realizing that they have, are, have are missing memories. And they realize about part, a little early, fairly early in the movie that they're all uh, on a boat to the afterlife and kind of talking through uh, how they got there and what they think is going to happen to them there. Um, it's a really engaging, Aging little film and i almost chose it and then went kind of uh weird and wild instead because <laughs> uh, madam Satan is not a quiet little talky film um <laughs> but outward bound is well worth watching oh you, you know what i lied i'm gonna throw out um uh dames ahoy um uh, i have <laughs> if you can it. find it i haven't seen it no one has that's alive <laughs> uh but that might be pretty good it might be yeah you don't know that it's not good <laughs> all right all right well um as always we want to give you guys the opportunity to get in contact with us so of course you can contact us on all of our socials at the flying cow pod uh you can also email me at the flying cow pod at gmail.com um do not forget to check out all of our other shows that we have on the network as well as uh, all of the things that we have on the youtube channel uh, don't forget to check out the Patreon, patreon.com slash the flying cow, um, where you can check out all sorts of exclusive things, including the uh, video version of this podcast, as well as our uh, Patreon exclusive uh, content. Uh, we've got a new Patreon exclusive podcast over there. Uh, Comets and Cabbages, our uh, review of uh, Avatar The Last Airbender. Uh, lots and lots of fun. So come and check all those things out. Hannah, Jack, let the people know what you got going on. As always, my podcast, Somebody Write This, where you have our 100th episode coming up pretty soon uh, when this is released. So uh, we've got something kind of silly and fun planned for that. So uh, check us out uh, wherever you find your podcasts. Jack, Jack you're muted. muted. <laughs> yeah basically same thing as last time and and, and your your audio is screwed hey, up again. Clay, tell us yeah. about yourself. 
<laughs> uh, what else could I plug? I, um, I, I, I will say I have won a Teddy Award now. I'm just declaring it because I created this thing and Jack's given himself two. <laughs> okay, cool. Okay, so um, yeah, so basically same plugs as last time. I um, I got Loki Season 2 coming out. Looking forward to that. If you haven't seen the trailer, I have finally. So yeah, get excited. Much hype. Soft Loki. He's gonna, You're not ready for him. Um, uh, got an audiobook coming out that I actually am using my name for. I haven't gotten permission to say it yet, so I'm not going to. But uh, again, Don't if when it. the time comes, yeah. uh, and uh, again, another big project I can't talk about yet, but it's coming out in no later than December. So hooray for that! I will let you guys know if I appear on the show again. Yeah. And otherwise, yeah. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Well, again, thank you guys all for listening. I hope you guys have enjoyed um, the. Uh, our dive into the films of 1930. Uh, we'll be back at some point uh, with another year, another group of films. Um, but until that time, move. Uh...